We've done it at, at, at Mount Calvary. We've just worshiped. And as, because, I honestly believe that because I was faithful over what belonged to another man, that when God grabbed a hold of my life, the, the, the day I made the decision to say yes to the Lord when I said yes to him I'm telling you he opened the nations to me I never preached my first revival I have never did my first initial sermon all I know it was as if there was a gate and God kicked that gate open and I ran out of that gate as fast as I could you know why because when God opens a door still touch your neighbor tell him get ready for an open door it might have been difficult, but God said, I'm getting ready to set before you an open door. Lord, help me preach my message. I studied hard for this. Here's where I'm closing with this. The Bible, I need four volunteers. Can I get four? How about four? Five. Come on, Stephen. Four volunteers. Come on, I need four. Just stand right there next to each other. The Bible said that there were four leprous men. And they were sitting outside of the gates of the city. Hear me. They were not in the city. They were outside the city. You know why? Because they had been rejected. Because of their condition because of their issues because of their dilemmas because of the disadvantages that they were facing and so because of that they were on the outside of the city they were stuck at the gate does anybody know what it's like to be stuck you're not really in there you're not really in there either you're just kind of stuck in betwixt and between these people were at they weren't in the city, they were outside, which means that they had no access to the king. They had no access to the king's court. Uh, and because of that, they had no access to the prophet or to the prophecy that the prophet gave. These men were leprous, and because of their leprosy, they had been excluded, they had been exiled, they had been isolated, and they had been shut out. Therefore, they missed the message. But what what they did not hear with the natural ear they heard it with the spiritual ear now check this out you've got a king's right hand man who is in the king's court he is in the presence of the prophet he is close enough to hear with natural ears but he's so far away that he cannot hear with his spiritual ears so close but so far away now that blesses me right there this is what blesses me because even though these guys were on the outside, they had an ear to hear on the inside what God had said he was going to do. <laughs> That blesses me. You know why? Because that means I ain't got to be all up in the face of the king to get a miracle. I'm talking about a small K, a small king. I ain't got to be in your inner circle. I ain't got to be right next to you. They were on the outside. They were rejected, excluded, and cut off. But God put a word in their spirit. And when they heard the word in their spirit, they got up and one of them said to the other, somebody look at the other one. Why are we going to sit here and die when we can leave here and live? So one of them was like, you can't do nothing. Leprosy has eaten your foot off. And the other one over here says, well, I got two good feet, so it's all right. Somebody over here says, listen, I can't see, but the guy right here said, I can see perfectly. So each and every one of them joined arms with the other. Tell your neighbor in unity, God commands the blessing. They hooked up with each other.
each other. And the Bible said that as they hooked up with each other, that over in the enemy's camp, the enemy is just piddling around. But when they hooked arms, let go. When they hooked up arms, there was a rumbling that happened. I dare you to hook up with somebody. When they hooked up arms, the enemy started hearing something from the heavens. It could not have been the four leprous men, but because they came into agreement, God started shifting things in the heavens. And the enemy got so scared that they said, man, we got to get out of here. And they started running. And they left all of their stuff. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. God cleared it out so you could clean it up. They went into the enemy's camp and never had to fight for anything. They just got everything. Look at somebody and tell them, let's come into agreement. Blessings that had been on hold were released. Miracles that had been locked up were released. Provisions that had been tied up were released. They were lepers, but they made a decision. They were outcasts, but they made a decision. They were disadvantaged, but they made a decision to come together. Why should we sit here and die? Thanks, guys. Don't move. And when they came together, God started things rattling in the heavens. And when he did, I hope I said it a minute ago, but I want to make sure you hear me. When they came together, look at somebody, tell them you better come together in your house. Everything in your house better come together. Your family, your children, your dog, everything in your house, if you ever come together, if you'll ever make the decision to come together, there are miracles that are waiting to be released. Several years ago, my husband had went into the hospital. Don't move, because I'm done. He went into the hospital, had a surgery. His kidney failed him. He only had one, he only had a piece of one at that. But his kidney failed him. And he was, he was in a very bad condition. And so I had stayed with him all day, all night. It was like four o'clock in the morning and he was resting. And so I said to myself, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna rest. And I'm gonna take a shower and I'm gonna come back. So I let all the people on duty know what I was doing. And I, I left the hospital. I knew he needed a miracle to live. I knew that his kidney had quit functioning. And so I went home and I, I started to, I, took, I, I was in the shower, I was taking a shower. It was like 4.30 in the morning. And all of a sudden, one of my daughters came running into the bathroom. She said, Mom, the phone just rang. She said, the hospital said that we need to get there quickly because Daddy, Dad, Dad is really bad. He's at a point that they don't think he's going to make it. So I was thinking, Lord, I can't even finish my shower. I, and, and it hit me. I mean, it hit me like, like, you know, lightning hit me. And I got mad about it. And so I got out of that shower. My hair was full of soap. 
and I wrapped myself up in a towel. I went and got a robe and I went and put it on. And I went into all three of my kids' rooms. I said, Nina, get up. I said, Lana, get up. I said, Tina, get up. My sister and her husband were living in our basement. I went down them stairs and I said, I need y'all to get up. I need everybody to meet me in the living room. And I said, tell her you are a liar. You are a liar. And I joined him, I said, get in a circle. You know, you think a family that sings together sounds awesome? You get a family praying together. Ain't no devil in hell can do anything with a family that comes together in prayer. That's why the enemy fights your family like he fights them because he knows the minute that you. It's over, baby. I said it's over. I grabbed their hands, they grabbed each other's hands. And we went, we just struck up a prayer meeting right there. I said, devil, if you mess with me, I'll turn this living room into a church house. And I will have church right now with my family. We started praying, I, I could feel, you know, there is a victory that you can feel. You ain't even gotta see it, but you can feel it. See, I don't know if y'all know about that, but for some of us that's been in the church for a while, we know what, they, what, I'm, what I'm talking about when I say there's a victory that you can feel. I felt it shoot through our prayer circle. I got back in the shower, I rinsed my hair off, I threw some clothes on, and I ran to the hospital, and I sat down, and I was waiting, I was waiting. I wasn't waiting for the death angel, I was waiting for victory. I was waiting for victory. Cause I made a decision, you gonna live. I am not about to raise these kids by myself. Don't even think about it. And I sat there and I said, God, in the name of Jesus. And I promise y'all, I no sooner got those words out of my mouth then that little tube that was connected to him that ran down into a bag that was beside his bed all of a sudden the bag was empty but all of a sudden all of a sudden that bag filled up I have never been so happy to see urine in all of my life you might think it was urine but it was a liquid miracle to me I said it was a liquid miracle to me because when we come into agreement, it shifts something in the heavens. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh, neighbor, God has got blessings held up in the heavens that's got your name on it. I dare you to hook up with somebody and say, God, open the windows. Open the windows! Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It was in 2009, I believe it was. There was a baby, a lady in our community had a baby. The baby was a victim of shaken baby syndrome. She, the baby was in the hospital. There was a, they had a feeding tube. And she kept saying, if I can just get my baby to the river, which was the name of the church that we pastored, if I can just get my baby to the river. So against the doctor's order, she took the baby off. I, don't, I wasn't going to tell you all this tonight. I don't very rarely ever talk about it, but I'm telling you somebody's about to get a miracle in this room. I don't know who it is. But she said, if I can get my baby to that church, God's going to heal my baby. And so she came to church. And as I got up to preach, my daughter handed me a note. She said, Mama, there's a lady here whose baby is in a coma. She's been in a coma for six months. And she took that baby off of, off, of the, off of the feeding tube. And she's brought that baby to church. And so I looked at her. I said, well, just find her. Tell her to bring her up here. I can pray for her right now. She said, she's got to get her back to the, to the hospital. And so that they went and got the mother. They brought the baby up to the front. And when they brought the baby up to the front, I looked at that baby and I felt this ridiculous, overwhelming compassion. I mean, you would have thought it was my own child. I can't even explain to you. All I know is I started praying for that child. 
she was standing right here on the floor and her head was right in front of this huge speaker. She never flinched. She never moved a muscle. As a matter of fact, you could go, you could go Google it. It's called uh, A Christmas Miracle at the River. And, and I'm telling you, that baby never flinched. She never moved. We, I started praying. Our elders gathered around that child. See, that's y'all got to hear me tonight. There is something going on. I said, there's something about unity. I, didn't, I wasn't planning to pull all this together. But God, I, that's why when I got up, I was talking about the unity right here. There is something that happens when we come together and we touch and agree. And the reason we are not seeing the miracles that we should be seeing in the church today is because everybody's so busy doing their own thing. And if we would all come together, we are the body of Christ. I started praying for that baby. Our elders came around. We started praying for that baby. We labored in prayer. See, folk don't know nothing about that today. We want to pray for two minutes and then we want to sit down. Sometimes if you're going to get a miracle, you got to be willing to pull your hair up in a pony. Roll your sleeves up and tell every devil in hell, I'm climbing up on the rock and I'm gonna stay here till I watch God do a miracle. We prayed that baby never moved. She never flinched. Finally, the mama turns around to walk out. Let me tell you what happened to me. I hit the altar. I started screaming to God. And I said, you are all I got. And you are all I know. I've been told all of my life that you do miracles. They told me that you were a miracle working God. Now all I'm saying to you, God, is are you the Christ? Or should I look for another? Be straight with me. I never felt so much compassion in my life. I learned a huge lesson from that compassion. Whenever you feel compassion like that, make sure you do something about it. Because every time that God, whenever, whenever you, when it, you would see God give a miracle, how many times in the Bible does it say, and Jesus being moved with I knew it was unusual. The mother went back. I just went to praying. We went to worshiping. I spoke for just a couple of minutes on anger because that's what had happened to that baby. I spoke and the altars filled with people that were dealing with anger issues. And we'll be done in two minutes, hold on. That baby, I had my eyes closed and Chris, what were we singing? I don't know what we were singing. Yeah, we give you all the glory. That's what we were singing. We worship you, our Lord. You are. Woo! Tell you something, that church came together on that song. I had my eyes shut, standing next to my husband, and all of a sudden I felt him hit me. And I was like, don't bother me right now. He said, babe, they, they, they just said that the baby's eyes open. I said, what? I said, I thought they left. I thought the mama left because she had to get the baby back to the hospital. He said, no, no, she didn't leave. She's in the back. She got as far as the back and she stopped and the baby opened his eyes. I said, tell him to bring that baby down here. And they came running to the altar. Her eyes were open. And I started prophesying to her. And I said, live, baby. You will live and not die. You will live and not die. I said, you got to ride a bicycle. I said, you got to swing on the swing set. I started calling those things that were not as though they were. 
I was standing right over her and when I started moving around her eye her big old eyes followed me all over the church hey. Woo. God gave us a miracle that day I said God gave us a miracle she had blood all on her brain it wasn't too long after that her mama came and brought me the paper and said look at the doctor's report there's no more blood there's no more swelling on her you know why because some people came together and they agreed Somebody said, I don't know what the message is about. I don't know if this is about making a decision. I don't know if it's about Paul. I don't know if it's about Saul. I don't know if it's about Samaria. I don't know what in the world this message is about. At the end of the day, when God's people come together, God can stop a famine. God can change somebody's life forever. Look at somebody and tell them, let's get together. I don't know who's in, who needs a miracle in your body right now. But wherever you are, I dare you to slip up your hands. Everybody that needs a miracle, I need a miracle. I want you to take your hand and I want you to put it on your neighbor's back. Just put it on their back. Now, I want you to pray for them right now. Open your mouth and pray for them. Come on, open your mouth and pray for them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke sickness. We rebuke chronic pain. In the name of Jesus, I come against every cell that is cancerous. I come against high blood pressure. I come against diabetes. I come against the famine of, of people that are in this room that are dying because they have no health. In the name of Jesus, we come together and I lift my brother up. Come on, church, open your mouth like you know how to pray. Pray for them like it's your friend, like it's your mother, like it's your father. Pray for their business. Pray for their finances. Pray for their family. Pray for their unborn desires. Pray for the vision that they haven't seen come to pass yet. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. Now let go of them and go for yourself. Tell them we give you. We worship you are Lord. You are worthy. Come on, every voice. Give him the glory. Because if you 
you praise him in his house, he will fix it in your house. I said if you praise him in his house, he will fix it in your house. room. I got to go. My time is up. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm the kind of preacher that likes to start at point A and end where I want to end. 95% of the time I do it. Somehow God works with me and he lets me, he just lets me do it. Tonight he interrupted this message for a more important message about five or six times. And if God came in this room like that, there's a reason behind it. He's about to interrupt your life. You think it's gonna go this way, but God said, don't panic. When I shift it and it goes another way, just worship me in the middle of all of it. Trust me, let me be God. And I'm gonna blow your mind. Let me tell you what I'm going to ask you to do. Nobody told me I had to do this. Nobody did. But tonight, even as I was sitting over there, the Lord spoke to me and he said, Cheryl, you put in a $240 seed. 
into this revival. I said, yes, Lord, I'll put in a $240 seed. He said, there are some people that need to join you. He said, but tell every person in this room that has the ability to sow a tithe off of that seed. I want every person in this room that believes anything can happen in your life in 24 hours. I want you to get a $24 seed. Pastor, how do you want them to do it? Do you want them to walk? Do you want them to, you know, they're going to pass the, ooh, that would be terrible.